Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new around here, my name is Trevor and this is Anna. We are the Delightful Travelers. Make sure to hit subscribe and click on that little bell to follow along on our adventures here in Turks and Caicos. If you're not new, it's nice to see all you guys again. And if you've already been following along, you probably know that we are in Turks and Caicos mm -hmm. in Providencialis to be uh, very exact. <laughs> We quickly found out as soon as we booked our tickets here that it's very, very, very expensive. So we thought today we'd devote an entire video to all the different costs. So first off, we are here in June, so I guess it's not super high season. It does seem pretty busy though. So if you're coming in like the middle of winter, January, February, March, you probably can expect things to be more expensive. I couldn't say for sure because we've never been here in the middle of winter, but that's typically how it works. So I figured we'd start off with accommodation costs. We did so much research to try to find out where to stay. Everything, especially in the middle of Grace Bay, which is an area I think we'll head to later, is so, so expensive. Most of the hotels seemed like they were looking at upwards of $500 to $1,000 US a night. Thankfully, this place doesn't cost that. Also, thankfully, we have a very nice pool here. We're not staying at a hotel either this is an airbnb it is an airbnb i think this is a condo area or a condo building i'm assuming there's people that probably live here like a good portion of the year come for a few months and own a place here but we've managed to rent a cute little airbnb so we'll take you up and give you a tour of our room it's a studio in a few minutes here and we'll tell you the price but i just want to say how happy we are to have a pool in june because it is hot you guys it's hovering around 32 degrees celsius every single day the sun is out it's beautiful but you need a way to cool off and thankfully well we can do it right here just walking around the grounds here you can see just how beautiful this place is you can see this waterfall this is a second tier pool that we just discovered honestly but this is all still pretty new to us as well but this kind of neat isn't it you have the big pool up there and then you have this i guess kind of little pool there is steps over there you can go into so so far so good with this place we will take you into our little studio apartment in a second but before we do that do us a really big favor it's super easy just hit that like button that believe it or not actually helps get the video out there YouTube likes that <laughs> and believe it or not our place is right here so this is our own patio here actually only really been using it to dry our towels and our <laughs> clothes but it's a cute little spot but of course there is that pool over there and there's the beach and stuff so we've been spending a lot of time not here but it's nice to have it. So the first thing you're going to notice when you enter the room here at least from the patio door is the queen size bed. It's not the most comfortable bed I've ever slept in but it's certainly going to do the trick. Over here we're just storing luggage you can see it's just on a coffee table that's all we need at the moment. Back this way this is the actual sofa. Notice it's all like brown finishings, like that mahogany, typical style Caribbean. I kind of like it. The only thing is it makes the room a little bit darker than it maybe could be. It could be lightened up. On my other side here, we have a TV, and we kind of make this running joke if you're new around here. We never use TVs when we travel, but for those of you that do, there's a nice flat screen television here. So when you come this way, on one side you have a desk, which of course is very convenient for us, especially for Trevor doing all the editing and everything. And there's also a dining room table on this side. And Funny enough, I feel like whenever we stay in studios, there's never both a desk and a table, so that's kind of cool. And then back this way, very, very great to have a kitchen. It's pretty small, but like really nice appliances. It has a dishwasher, which is kind of mind blowing for a, a place this size and for this price, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But it's really great to have a kitchen. We're gonna get into food costs in a little while and how expensive restaurants are. So having a kitchen is great. We've been having breakfast and lunch here and then usually eating out for dinner. So I'll take you guys in the bathroom here. You can see, of course, you have a toilet. Nice shower that's going to work for us and then you have a vanity over here. It's quite a spacious bathroom so we definitely like that. Come back out into the hallway here and there's Anna. Yeah so we have a closet over here and when we first got here we opened it up and realized that they have beach chairs, an umbrella, some snorkel gear and a cooler in there which is fantastic. Something we've learned right away is that it's really hard when you're not staying on the beach at a beach resort to get chairs, like to get loungers. It's really really expensive in some places don't let outside guests come. Talk about that a little bit more on the prices of that. So that's a huge perk of this place. Another big perk right here, there's a laundry room. Yeah, that's that's such a great perk for us. We travel a lot, so that's gonna come in handy. Yeah, and it's great for people if you're coming for a couple of weeks and you wanna be able to do laundry in the middle of your stay. 
done. One thing we really like about this place is the location. Now we're not super central like in the main part of Provo here. We're close to Turtle Cove, but what's good about Turtle Cove and the marina is there's lots of restaurants around. So now you're probably wondering how much this costs per night, right? So get this, this is June again, so I imagine in high season it's a lot more expensive. This is about $150 per night. So for one week, you add that Plus up. taxes and fees taxes. that go on Airbnb, but in general, like starting at 150 a night, yeah. pretty good, especially considering, I think I said already, is that when I was researching hotels, the cheapest one I think I could find was 200 a night, but it ended up being like, when you put in all the fees, $1,000 more for one week. So yeah. it was just like, whew. and then most of the hotels were a good thousand US dollars <laughs> per night. Thousand oh. dollars a night. We found one place, well, we were, <laughs> before we realized the prices, it was $10,000 for a week. It's just like, that's so crazy to us, especially coming from the DR, which is where we came from. Yeah. And we know we can't directly compare the two, so we know we got a bargain mm -hmm. for $150 a night because good luck finding that if you're coming here, guys, yeah. unless you maybe stay here. <laughs> so if you are interested in staying here, we will put the link to the Airbnb listing below in the description. That's just right below the video. <laughs> and now let's head out and maybe explore some of the island. So before we get going, we wanted to show you the car that we have rented for the week here. Now, come on over here, I'll show you, because this is kind of cool. It actually has a name it's called muddy or mooty I'm not really sure the pronunciation so this is kind of cute I think you can rent all these different cars from the place you rented off of and they all have names it makes for a kind of fun adventure now here's the thing we didn't plan on renting a car here but it took us about three hours and we realized you have to have a car when you're on this island you have no choice it's not very walkable so you'll need one of these so if you're wondering about costs of a rental car the small car like this seems to be anywhere from like 35 to 50 ish per day. I think we ended up spending about 350 for the week or something mm. like that. A little pricey, more pricey than I thought. Yeah, but not too bad. I mean, at home in Canada right now, it's like $100 or more <laughs> a day to rent a car. So, eh. <laughs> Can you guys, can they hear the airplanes? Let's see. We're uh, very close to the airport here. So yeah, you see uh, airplanes from time to time. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Thankfully we have this car, but I do want to talk about taxis really quick. Taxis are very expensive on the island. We've only taken one and we got a quote basically, and it seems to be about a dollar per minute. A 10 minute drive was about 10 to 12 US dollars to get around. So this island's pretty long. So you can imagine if you're going long distances, that's gonna add up quick, so it's worth it to get a car. We have just come over to the cutest open air restaurant. It's called Turk's Kebab. Yes, it's Turkish and Greek food. Really excited to try it. Of course, in upcoming videos, we'll be trying some more local like fish dishes and that kind of thing. But today, we're just really excited that we can get a variety of different types of foods here. But before we get into that, let's talk about a little bit more about taxis. Uh, when we first arrived, we actually tried to order a couple of taxis. We tried a couple of numbers, and they were either busy or like didn't show up. So we quickly realized that we need a rental car. So today I decided to go for something called a Euro kebab. And if you guys don't know what that is, this is basically what we ate when we were in Greece all of the time. And sometimes turkey as well. I'm so excited about this. In this there's some beef, lamb, tzatziki, some greens, and look at the pita itself, the wrap. Very nicely well done. Let's try it, shall we? Look at the inside of that thing. First thing I notice is just how nice and spicy and peppery that meat is. Two different kinds, it makes it full of flavor. And the tzatziki is perfect. The wrap is nice and warm. It's gonna do the trick. It's kind of like a perfect way to do lunch if you're on the island here. You're not gonna break the bank by being here because at night those meals get really, really expensive. But already one bite in, I highly recommend this place. So I went for the chicken shish. There was an option to get uh, both both of these in either a pita or a wrap. We both decided on the wrap, which looks really, really good. These were both $12. So if we'd had a bigger breakfast, which we did not, we probably easily could have split one and had like a $12 lunch. Instead, it's gonna be $24 for our lunch. Uh, it looks like the main dishes for the evening are a little less than $20, which is really good for what we've seen so far here on, on, in Provo. I'm excited for you to try this one because mine is mine's superb. Mm, wow. This is so good. I'm gonna say right away, this is a must come when you are here on the island. The wrap itself feels really, really fresh, but then it's also warmed up. Really nice touch to it. The chicken, so soft, so tender. Really nice spices going on. It's not spicy, but there's a lot of different flavor. 
And then uh, I love tzatziki. It's just a nice little zing flavor to it. Yeah, this is this is a winner. Well, we've now come over to the beach, as one does when you're in Turks and Caicos. That is really what you're here for, isn't it? The beach. But take a look at a very cute little setup here. I'll show you right now. So here's our two chairs and umbrella. This is from our Airbnb, you guys might remember, and we're this close to the ocean, huh? Speaking of cute little things, we want to say a huge thank you again to Cali Kates for sponsoring this video. This is one thing that if you are coming to Turks and Caicos or anywhere sunny and beachy where you're going to be in the water, this is a must have. It's basically a floating case for your phone. So you can go and take video and photos in the water. It's waterproof and it floats. The best thing, I'd say this is like a $30 GoPro for the it water. It is basically there. a $30 <laughs> GoPro. You get every, all the benefits of a GoPro, but in a convenient case, you just use your phone with it. So you guys have probably been to many beaches where you see people selling kind of cases that, let's be honest, really aren't that good. You buy one, you don't trust that it's going to work. We can promise you with this one, that is not the case. This is very high quality. And look, here is the best part. It floats, you guys. So you never have to worry about it. You can just put this around your neck and then just start swimming away. Also, for every purchase made on CaliCase.com, they donate $1 to the Ocean Conservancy. So use our code DELIGHTFULTRAVELERS20 at checkout to save 20% off your next CaliCase. The link is in the description for that. We want to say a huge thank you to Cali Case for again sponsoring this video and supporting creators like us. So we have set up shop with the stuff that our Airbnb provided. It's very, very convenient. I think some people even go and buy the stuff because it's even still cheaper than renting chairs on the beach. The cheapest we found so far is $40 for a cha two chairs and an umbrella, yeah. but we went the other day to a hotel and they were doing $75. And that doesn't include anything. That's not like with food purchase or something like that. No, it's $75. That might be the most expensive. And I just want to show these guys. So where you rent those chairs, there's lots of them on the beach, but it's just right up there. Like honestly, about a hundred feet away from us. And we're here and this setup, well, this setup is free, isn't it? Yeah, so we're right now near a restaurant called Somewhere. We haven't actually visited it yet, but a lot of people have recommended it to us. We've been doing Instagram stories during our time here. A lot of people said we have to go there. I think it's sort of like a Tex-Mex place, but they have some good happy hours and then that kind of thing. And then there's snorkeling off here. So it's a good place, I think, to set up shop on the beach. Yeah, but I guess the, the moral of the story here, the key is it's expensive yeah. on this island in general. It really is. <laughs> Back in the Dominican Republic, we paid, I think, maybe $5 for two chairs and an umbrella for the day. Oh my gosh, where are we at now? So I'll talk about excursions here or tours for a moment. There's no shortage of those on this island. We've seen everything from parasailing, you kind of just go out in a boat for a day and just kind of hop around the uh, cluster of islands here. You can go snorkeling. We did notice like you can get a private charter, like basically go out with your own group of friends or whatever for about $600 a day and up and like and way up if you want to pay that. But we did manage to find some kind of shared half day tours to go snorkeling for about 125 US dollars a day. So I guess that's that's not so bad, but just be prepared to pay maybe a little bit more than usual, at least what we're used to, for excursions if you're coming here to Turks and Caicos. Well, it's now a little bit later and we came over to the place we mentioned earlier called Somewhere. How about this setting, you guys? You can hear the music in the background. Hopefully you can hear me. I should also mention that we dropped the car off because where we were on the beach was very close. So that means I can have a beer. The reason we're here is it's happy hour. This was only $5. Now that's a good deal. That's finally a good cost <laughs> here in Turks and Caicos, but that's a really good deal. And this is a craft beer by a brewery, like a craft brewery here on the island. So I'm excited about that because we've been to other places on the beach that if there's no happy hour around, it can cost like 10 or $12 for a Corona or something like that. So as you can tell, everything's just more expensive here in Turks and Caicos, except when you can find a happy hour. So if you're coming to the island, specifically Provo, come here to somewhere. Apologies for the music if it's really loud. I'm gonna to try to talk over it and hopefully it's not doesn't interrupt things too much because it is loud here. However, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the other prices of different types of alcohol. Trevor was just talking about beer and how you can find it. Pretty good, pretty good prices, especially right here. Uh, as far as mixed drinks go, I've noticed most cocktails, like beachy cocktails, are anywhere from like $9 to $12. glass of wine seems to be like $10 to $12, something like that, and the bottle is around, starting around $35. But there are happy hours here and there, though this place definitely has good happy hours. They seem to switch it up every day, so I think there's beer happy hour every day from a certain time, but then they have other things like half-price bottles of wine, I think on Wednesdays, and a bunch of things during the week, so that's really great. And we've been going to a place called Mango Reef, which is closer to where we're staying. They always seem to have a daily happy hour as well. 
So we've just come back to where we started from. It's our Airbnb, the pool, having a little night swim or evening swim, I guess it is at this point. It's just starting to get dark out. The water is really, really warm. We're getting the beach and sand and salt <laughs> off of us. And there's a few things that I guess we didn't touch on yet. One you might be wondering about is groceries. So we haven't done a ton of research into it, but we did go to the IGA here one day and get mm -hmm. a few things. We found most stuff is quite expensive. It is. So probably everything that you buy at home, expect to pay at least a few dollars more than you would there. <laughs> Nothing too crazy, but like it's a, it's a little bit I more think expensive. It's, I think they have to import everything It here. might be, yeah, like things that you might, if you're from Canada or the States, I'll say specifically because it's close to here, like peanut butter or something yeah. like that. I think that costs a lot more, Yeah. you know, because you have to import that. But there's other things that, does not so yeah and I think in general Canada is more expensive for groceries than the US so yeah Canadians sure. or Americans <laughs> might get more sticker shock than Canadians would that's a good point the other thing mm -hmm. we noticed is um, cell phone plans so we were trying to figure this out and we decided not to go for one because when we travel we're Canadians and our, our cell phone plans are like the worst in the world we pay the most I think it's yeah, us and, and roaming is just roaming is ridiculous it's, it's like $15 a day on top of um, your already your existing plan so it's just way too expensive so yeah we have to be very strategic about what we do so we, we it was funny we were talking to a local and he doesn't even have a data plan because it's so expensive yeah. here so i think for americans coming down right they don't have to worry about this yeah you probably much. can just turn on your roaming and not pay very much per day <laughs> for, yeah. for you guys it's probably easy for the rest of us maybe depend on using wi-fi yeah maybe wi-fi works pretty well here but that's that's the way we're doing it. We're just here for a week, so we're just trying to do that for now. But how about this lighting? Do you guys find this fun? This is pretty it's cool. A little bit like, weird. <laughs> there's like one of the pool lights there. I thought it would be a cool scene. I don't know. We're going to go inside now anyway. Fun day here in Turks and Caicos. Just getting to explore a little bit more of this beautiful island and just learning a little bit more about the costs of it all, huh? Yeah, but also getting to eat some yummy food, spend some time at the beach. I don't think a day can go by here that you shouldn't spend it at the beach. Yeah. The beaches here are so amazing. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully we gave you a little bit of an idea of what to expect if you're coming here. We're going to pay for a few mm -hmm. things so you can maybe plan out your budget. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure some of you are watching right now going like, yeah, I mean, this is what I expected to pay in Turks and Caicos. Yeah. But I'm sure there's others that are watching that are going like, whoa, hold on a second. I'm used to Mexico. I'm used to the Dominican Republic mm -hmm. prices. And this yeah. is crazy. Why is it so expensive? Mm -hmm. And that's a good question. Why is it so expensive? Well, I think for one, if you're comparing it to those two countries, is that it is very small. I don't mm -hmm. think there's a lot of agriculture or anything no. here. So they have to ship everything in and that costs a lot more. Whereas on the DR and in Mexico, I think they can grow a lot yeah. of their own fruit. And in this yeah. island over time, I mean, it is a British territory. Over time, it's kind of, kind of got the reputation of like kind of like a luxury mm -hmm. travel destination and that's why but let us know what yeah. you guys think is this way too pricey or way not pricey yeah like, and also <laughs> if you have advice for people that are watching this maybe you've been here before and you figured out some good budgeting tips or like mm -hmm. great places to eat that might be a little bit cheaper anything like that leave a comment below yeah yeah leave us that comment speaking of eating we are hoping to get out there and do some eating mm -hmm. and maybe show you guys a few more restaurants maybe even have a video dedicated to that Hopefully. we also have a possibly one other video mm -hmm. in mind just kind of like how to spend a day here maybe you're coming on a cruise ship maybe you just are here for seven days and one day you don't want to be on a resort or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so that's the plan. As long as the weather cooperates in the next few days, we will get those videos done yeah. before we leave. Also, if you're watching this video, because you're looking for some tips and tricks for coming mm. to Turks and Caicos, be, for, be sure to watch our last video, which yeah. was our first impressions. We had some kind of like little tips or we tidbits, did. things that we learned when we first got here that maybe surprised us a little bit. So as always, it's Trevor and a Delightful Travelers. Hit the subscribe button, there's lots more coming up even after we leave this island, there's lots more coming up. Leave us a comment, share the video. If you got this far, it probably means you like it, so like the video, that really helps us out. But for now, we're gonna sign off. We'll see you in the next Turks video very soon. All right guys, that's it. From Turks and Caicos, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.